example, a great example of atmosphere perspective because there is more kind of, eh, would that be fog or would that be smog? I'd say probably smog as this is a view from the Getty Museum to their um, cactus gardens onto the LA landscape. So it's probably some smog. Either way, little water particles are in the way. And so it seems to fade into, you hardly see the horizon line. It fades away into the distance. This is my nearby Point Vicente Lighthouse. It's from a local magazine. I thought that you might be able to access some magazines and make some work from there. So I want to give you an example of how to scale up. So one nice way to scale up is you can break it up into a grid that's each one inch squares, so smaller than this, and then make the grid on your paper maybe two inch squares or three inch squares, and that's an easy way to scale up. So let's find this orange. It'll be more vibrant, but we will add tint tones and shades as we move along, and we can change the color just a little bit to make it a tiny bit more green, too. This yellow is not very strong, so I'll add some more. So I'm just matching to that orange. I bet there's one moment with this orange that's kind of like this. I'll go for it. And then I want a yellow because the highlights will need it. And then green and blue. I'm going to have it be kind of like the color wheel, except in a line. Green. There's some yellow greens, there's more pure greens. for me is the opposite and I know that I can use the complement the opposite color to make lovely a lovely palette that's cohesive start tinting things. Green does need a little tint, but not too much. And I'll tint as I go with the orange. So this lovely um, neutral that I mixed up here, oh, let's add the black too. But this lovely neutral that I mixed at the top here, I'm gonna go in and the first thing I'm gonna do is fill in where I have shadows. And that is often called an underpin underpainting. It helps you lay out the image and get the idea of where your lights and darks are.
probably I'll use that in the background of the sky too. So we start with the foreground for the underpainting because that's where the darkness is. But once we really start painting, we work back to front. That's a traditional mode of painting, particularly with landscaping. So I'd like you to try it. It's easy to get excited about the details of a piece and jump into those. Yet, the layering has a more realistic effect if you work back to front once you're on, onto the regular part. most important thing in the image, just like in photography, it's a larger piece of paper, so I could use a bigger brush, but I'm not really wanting a ton of fussy brush strokes, so I'm using my sponge, and I figure you all can find a sponge somewhere. I had left a little whisper of a drawing to show where the white clouds start. Remember, think of the drawing as, and some of the marks for painting, as little notes for you to reference as you go along. I'm gonna put a boat on the ocean. all of it and I'll repaint the foreground. I'm just doing it light enough, transparent enough, so I can still see where my drawing sits on the canvas or paper as it were. Let's see that white has kind of a yellow blue. I'll neutralize it. Let me show you what I'm doing. Remember, more neutral as you get into the background. So that means tinting is a great way to neutralize as you get into the background. Pretty good. I may start defining this tree more. You could use pure white and then paint over it to get it just the right tone of the background. It might be a good time to come in again with the sponge. subscribe to my channel. You need to come up with a, a name well, for I my subscribers. You need to help me out. Paint Party? A 
hey paint artists. I, I always like to say artists and remind people that while they're doing making art, they are artists. timing because I'm gonna I'm gonna put this painting <clears throat> like 10 15 feet away from me and make some judgment calls on what needs to be shifted and changed Using a method called scumbling. So it's dry on dry paint. The paintbrush is not loaded with wet paint, with watery paint. So it's dry on dry scumbling. Offers you to texture. So you'll have more texture in the foreground. This is more in the middle ground, but it is my focal point, so I'm going to allow it to have a little bit more texture than other objects in my middle ground. And I'll probably make it less of a dark value as I work on the painting. So let's see. It's pretty dry. Is it going to drip? Yeah, that one spot's going to drip. I don't really mind drips. I'll put it about 15 feet away, okay? So I'm gonna put it here. here. I'll put it here, I'll stand 15 feet away, 